Hello, it's Sarah. And I've been playing around with my sprays, and I have not done this for a while, guys, but um, I want to make the October art journal page. So I'm using, uh, this is what? This is just mixed media paper, 12 by 9, so when you cut it in half. I've been doing one of these a month, which I'm so happy because it makes me get out my mixed media supplies because I, I do so many mediums um, and I have so many supplies. It's just good to have this to pull me back to it, even though I've been doing polymer clay. So I'm going to, let me just cut this down to 6 by 12. And then that's going to be the size of our art journal for 2017. I think I'm going to add some um, gesso to the paper because I'm going to be using the Dilution sprays and these are water based and I just want to, um, let's see, should I do it kind of like rough? Uh, I could do it, I might do it with a card. See this is another thing, I like to do things I don't do all the time. I want to do something new, that's what I do. Um, so I have some white gesso over here, and I'm just going to pull it, kind of coat some of the places and not coat others. And then when the inks hit the paper, they will react accordingly. So if there's gesso there, they'll be maybe, you know, we'll see what happens. i got to give this a little chance to dry. I like it. So you can see little shiny bits and not shiny bits, and I like that. It gives a little texture too, um, but for the most part, I just want it to seal the paper. I'm going to be using acrylic paints as well, and I'm not sure how they're going to play together. So I need to dry this. Let me just get my heat gun out. I was going to get my nails done today and I thought twice about it because I knew I was going to be playing with these inks. And these are the messiest inks I mean that there can be. They do not come off. So this will probably be on me for at least till tomorrow no matter how you how many times you wash your hands. Oops. I've kind of come up with a design that I want to do. Um, and it's just for October, which is fall, pretty much the beginning of fall. I know I'm late, but I'm so glad I'm doing this because it makes me, like I said, it gets me back to the mixed media and using all these supplies that I have. So I've got the delusion sprays in my yellow, orange, and this is called cherry pie. I'll probably do a little bit of that because I liked how it, I, it, it definitely looks red. But this is what I'm thinking. So just a couple of pumpkins. And I'm going to use this stamp that I have. It's just a dollar or something. I think I got this at AC Moore in their, when they had their holiday bin. And it's like an oak leaf. I have also carved my own leaves. And I'm sure I could find in my stash other leaf stamps. But for this, I'm just keeping it simple. And I'm also just going to sketch out a couple of pumpkins. So we'll do that together. I'm going to use either stays on inks or... I have this pad that I bought that I never use, so I'll probably use the red and orange from this. Dina Wakely Permanent um, Archival Ink. And then I have also used, and I've already gone ahead and cut out some leaves in different um, gel pr jelly prints. So I just went through, actually I didn't look very far, I had a little stash here that I found a really pretty reddish and some brown and some orange leaves and some yellow, you know, fall colors. So I stamped those onto the jelly prints and cut them out. I have a green one, but I'm not sure I'll use it, but here's the brown. I also used, this is like an envelope, but it had kind of a, an orange, I needed more orange and then this beautiful one. So I cut my leaves from those. And then I think I'm just going to cut the 
pumpkins out of book pages. So I'll do that in a minute. We'll sketch those out. But first let's get our paper. Where is it? Is this the one? This isn't the one. I put it, I just put it aside, I guess. Here it is. Sorry. But it's dry enough. And I'm going to spritz it. And I'm just using these stencils. And I don't use these very often. I have two. I'm probably just going to use this one. But I have these doily ones. I'm just going to use this one. I just want a modeled effect, kind of. I don't know. I don't want too much going on because I'm going to paint it. So let's just spritz, shall we? Spritz. Ooh. And turn it over. Um, I should clean it off a little. Because these, like I said, these dilution sprays are water soluble. So if I were to go back over this, well, maybe I have a baby wipe. Um, it's going to come off onto whatever. So if you're not working with these colors next time, you'll be sorry. I'm going to put a little yellow. Oh, using the same. Oops, see, this is where I'll, eh, they'll blend. So let's go over here with the yellow. And a little bit of red. My pumpkins are probably just going to be in the middle, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'll probably shade around the whole thing to get to ground everything. You got to be careful when you wipe your stencils because I'm so rough. I'm so abusive. All right. Maybe a teensy bit of red, which, you know, it's hard for me. But it looks good. I'm just going to go red, 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 red. See how far it goes? It goes far. OMG. It's pretty though. I'm good. I'm going to keep that. And I guess I should give that a chance to dry. I'm not sure. I'm no expert on these, but I think it's very likely that they will react with when I start to um, Mod Podge my little leaves down. I've cut a bunch of leaves. I don't know if I said this because this is my second time filming this um, from a stamp. I've already gone ahead and stamped them out. I'm probably repeating myself. And I just used jelly prints that I had right here on my desk. So I'm going to... Um, adhere those with Mod Podge. I like Mod Podge. A lot of people prefer matte medium, gel medium, things like that, but I like Mod Podge. I don't, um, I like it. I'm just going to dry this. my brayer and I'm just going to go over it a little bit with some white gesso that I have here because I just feel like I want my leaves to stand out a little better so some of it's a little too um it's too bright I think so we're gonna I know this is one of the things that I didn't understand about mixed media when I first started doing it we just did all that gorgeous work now why are we covering it up well because it's a background. It's not the focal point. So we're just going to push it back a little bit and let these stamps that I stamped out be the stars of the show. And that's why you do it. Um, and you don't have to do any of this the way I do it. I just, you know, I think I've finally gotten the hang of it. 
understanding the process and so I'm just sharing what I do now with you guys but yeah some of this color is definitely coming off on my brayer I can see it on my sheet over there and it's like but that's okay because it's still there and now maybe I've I've blocked it or I've set it into the page so that now when I use my Mod Podge it won't react because I have a little thin coat of gesso on top and I could have used matte medium or something but I wanted the white gesso because um, like I said I wanted to tamp it down a little so let's set that aside I love it though that is so beautiful I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, I mean I guess I'll just keep this here this doesn't seem too wet I want to choose a piece of book page to create my pumpkins. And I have this dictionary page. This is just a book. This is Ken Follett's World Without End that I ripped up. But I have old papers, new papers. I think I really like this color of the paper. I don't like the line down the middle because pumpkins are going to have the lines. Kiwi's with me. Hi, Kiwi. What are you doing? What are you doing, pretty girl? Uh, this one has red words. I kind of like that. Let's just do one with this. I'm going to use my pencil. Don't know where it is at the moment. I like this mechanical pencil. I think I got this on eBay. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Amazon. Sorry, guys. It's called the Graph Gear 1000. It's by Pentel. And you can um, change the lead sizes in here. This is just your basic 2B lead. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, my little sketch, because it is on this type of paper. So let me just show you on my original sketch. I just want you to go with an apple shape. So just a circle, but then you're going to tweak it in here. You're going to go in and out, and your stem comes up. I mean, this is very not realistic, just for fun. So, And then you can kind of play with it and round it out more. On the bottom, it has a little dip, too. And that's it and then you're going to add these um, kind of the indents on a pumpkin but we're going to paint those to create it to make it look three-dimensional and then I'm going to do a bit of a skinnier guy over here so I'm going to I'm going to do two of them in that same way so let's see if I can get huh so like I said let's see how big my paper is too I don't want it to be too big so just like a circle about like this big and then you start making the dip in the top like an apple and just come around can you see yeah come down and listen pumpkins are irregularly irregular they're not perfect they have they have blemishes on their on them as well and so you know it is what it is don't get too crazy over it. it's gonna look like a pumpkin for sure but I like the shape and then you're gonna do a little stem like that so I think I like that um, I don't think it's too big but it is big usually I always go too big usually always so I'm gonna try and do a smaller one maybe I'll do three because I can overlap them that would be cool um, let's go with a taller oval shape like this and then make the little divot and make the little stem at the top and the little dimple in the bottom sorry I'm chewing gum and that's two this one is so circular I don't really like it that circular I want to cut off oops cut some of it off and make it a little higher up here I don't know I liked my original of course 
And then we'll do a little shorter guy over here, like a really short, kind of wide guy right here. Just make like a heart almost. And another stem. And you can make your stems all different shapes and sizes, like that's a skinny one. All right, so I'm going to cut these out. And then when this is dry, oops, it's a little wet still, we're going to start to adhere. These might be too big. I like them though. Let's just cut them out. We're going to start to adhere. And this is nice thick paper. I'm not sure if Allie gave me this. She sent me a box of old, all types of ledgers and maps and um, book pages and you name it. It was amazing. So I've been rummaging through that for the most part when I look for papers to use. But any type of book that's like my See, look, I don't like that. I have to fix it. Let me go this way. Much better. I like him. Um, but yeah, any any paper. Use um, scrapbook paper. You don't have to use anything that I say. You do what you what you have in your stash. And I personally don't expect you guys to go buy anything that I have you can absolutely make do with what you have and have fun and create something um, that's what I'm here to do just have fun enjoy the process oh, that is wonky as could be and use what you have because we spend all this money on supplies and then um, we move on. I do. I move on to other things because I love to learn new things. I love to try new things. That's like really what inspires me. When I see something new, it gets me so excited. Um, and so that's why I don't tend to have, I do have Sarah style. We talk about that a lot. My subbies know what we mean. I have my own style, but I definitely get inspired by trying new things. All right, so I've got three little pumpkins. I've already cut out a bunch of leaves, um, oak-shaped leaves. We've got our background, and let me just give it a spritz and make sure it's dry. A spritz. This would be a spray. No, this would be a, a blow. I don't know what it is. is you can stamp on here you can do more stenciling have fun and make it what you want it to be so what I was just thinking was a little more stenciling in white or black usually um, I like to add contrast as well so but you can always do that at the end too so um, just keep in mind that what I do is not cut in stone or set in stone and there are like, look, here I have this doily. I, I never use this, but maybe I should do something. I think I want to do something with this. I think some brown. I have this brown, timber brown stays on. Let's do it on the back and see what happens. It's not very defined. I think black would be better. I have other um, like kind of doily shapes. 
and flowers. I have, you know what my go-tos are, my script writing. I love my dots. Stuff like that. I have a crop, like kiss hug, kiss hug. Um, so, let me think, 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 think. I think I am going to do some white and black real quick. I hadn't intended on it, but I think I'm going to do some black script and some white dots. This is an old stamp I got in uh, on an, on an end cap, I'm sorry, at Michael's. Um, I don't know that they have it, or no, they, they ref definitely don't have it because they get stuff in seasonally. I think this is also a recollection stamp, so it's their own brand. And I know that they, um, they change it up all the time. They bring in seasonal stuff constantly. So this was, I think it was probably a Valentine's Day because I think it was with some other French type stuff. But everybody, you guys know you can get a script. Now, also, I'm going to go horizontally for this piece, and but you can go vertically if you choose to. I'm thinking I want to put like this. And you know what? The only reason I even did that was because the script is written in a, you know, I don't want it to be upside down, but so what if it's upside down? We're not reading this. It's just in the background. So don't worry about it. All right, and then for the white, I think I'm going to use some, uh, I was going to say opalescent paint for the white, but I think I'm just going to stick with regular white. Or, yeah, I, lo I love white, but I have like these colors, buttermilk. Maybe I'll go buttermilk. Let's just use buttermilk because it's not pure white. And I'm going to make a little palette over here. So I'm just going to take my finger and kind of flatten that pile of paint out. And then I'm going to use this stamp and just stamp it because I don't have a white ink. So I have this buttermilk. And any of this texture, whoops, because we're doing um, decoupage, it can make it little a little bumpy when you're gluing on your stuff and everything, but that, I like texture. I like things to have. So that looks cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to stop and clear off my stamp. These are, I want to say, these stamps here. This especially I have, was a set of four. And I believe it's Diane Reevely. I have letters, numbers, dots, and one other one. I think it's like um, a chevron. Anyway, they stay in my drawer and I just use them all the time. All right. Now I think I'm ready to add, because see I have this little floral pattern too. We'll do that on top after. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So let me put this to the side. My desk starts to get a little hectic, so I want to kind of put things away as I go if I can, and that way it's not such a big chaotic mess because, you know, I think I work best with a little more structure. And I think I'll turn these over so I don't see my pencil marks. And then once I get it on here, yeah, I think it's going to be good. See the size? I like it. It's going to be perfect. Okay. So let's get these on. I guess I'll go away and I'll come back. And I'm just going to use Mod Podge. This is, nope, that's not it. Here's my little Mod Podge. Water-based sealer, glue, and finish. And it's the matte finish. And I'm going to adhere my pumpkins. And then I'm going to come and adhere a few of these leaves. So these are the um, oak-shaped. I think this is oak. I want to say it's an oak leaf. We have oak trees in my yard and it looks very much like this. And some of these are not showing up because of the background. I told you that's because the background is so bright. I will be doing some shading for sure. 
and that way I will have them popping off the page. I'm also just going to stamp some and I'm going to adhere these. All right, so that's what we're going for here. All right, you guys, I'll be right back. All right, before I put my pumpkins down, I want to add a few more stamped leaves just to fill in. And that way I have the option if I want to add more color, I'll use it. And if not, I'll leave them in the background. But I want them there, and then I can kind of go based on what I've got there. So I'm going to stamp a few in black. Kind of, and they're overlapping. I don't like that I did that. That makes me mad. <laughs> a couple down on the, on the bottom because they are falling leaves. They're not. All right, I think. See, that smudged. That just smudged because the, maybe the decoupage wasn't. But this is permanent ink, so there's no way I'm getting it off. I'll fix it with paint. And actually, I'm just going to put it on top of that one. That'll be a background. Um, do I want another one? Maybe coming from over here. <clears throat> and from over here and over here and over here. And here, here. Getting a little crazy. Hi, Kiwi. Are we getting crazy? All right, that's good. So I might have gotten carried away, but I think it's going to be good. All right, now I'm going to get my, oops, the big guy first. I think I'm going to center him. Maybe not. Maybe I'm not going to center him. Maybe, yes, I think I will center him. They all have to kind of be sitting on the ground. See how I've gone over things? So I think he needs to go over to the... All right, so I'll show you how I do that. I just use my Mod Podge. I'm going to put it out here. And I've got a very, very scruffy brush that I use for glue. And we're going to adhere. And he can be in the front. Let's see. Maybe I'll put him on top of him. And I don't know what I'm doing. We're just doing it. So I'm going to put a little Mod Podge on the surface. And then I put Mod Podge on the back of the paper as well. And then I'm going to, and you can use tweezers to place things. I'm going to just put it in, giving it some room. I'm not going to go over the top yet. First, I'm going to get this on here. But see how I'm picking up the ink? See how that turned orange? Because the orange ink is coming up, which that's fine. Or, pumpkins are orange, so we're, we're good. I'm going to put this kind of centered, but overlapping him. And then this one's going to be overlapping too. He'll be in the front. So they're kind of in a row. I don't know if I like that. Maybe he needs to go behind. I think I like that better. So let's put some Mod Podge behind here. And again, this is all personal preference, how you see things, because there could be a pile of pumpkins overlapping in a million different, well, maybe not a million, but I kind of want this to be like that. And then I'm just going to cover these guys with a coat of Mod Podge. What's the matter, Kiwi? Kiwi's with me. She's my green cheek Conyer. She's just a tiny little bird. But she's a good girl. This one looks a little crooked. But that's okay. And then we're going to start painting. That's my favorite. Look, look at all that orange that's kind of coming from the background. I love it. I'm loving it. All right. First, before I start painting, I am going to dry this and just put in definition lines for my pumpkins, and that way I'll know where to float and everything. 
but I'm going to get out my painting supplies and that would be I have these acrylic paints these are Americana deco art Americana or ceram coat either one let's see mostly they're all Americana this one's ceram coat a little bit of brown red orange yellow I don't have any yellow hold on I'm going to use cad yellow and just autumn colors I did have a couple of neons so maybe I'll pop some neon on there and then I probably will use buttermilk but I think I'm gonna pop it up with the white we're gonna do our highlights with the white I have neon yellow too let's do that all right so let's get and you know what I could put a crow on here or something <gasps> I have a crow I think I have a crow you know what it's a wooden crow but yeah like a crow sitting on top of the pumpkin would be super cute so if you guys have anything that you want to add you just go for it all right so let me dry this and I'll be back okay everything's dry let me get situated and I'm gonna use Payne's gray and black green first to kind of set the ground in and go around the piece to kind of um, you know what I'm not going to do that first let's do our pumpkins so the first color I'm going to use for my pumpkin is spiced pumpkin and I'm going to do it in more of a wash for right now and I use palette paper paper towels and a, an angle brush but for I'm going to use water and um, a flat to do this part sorry a little ahead of myself and a wash is mo this is not a wash I am just making a little wet puddle here and I'll keep adding water as I need to but a wash is basically um, mostly water and paint in your pumpkins just get a little color there and you know what if it's too much I don't know I think I'm gonna blot go in with a little more water and just grab it from that puddly pile already I had a puddle of paint there so I'm just gonna get these orange first and you guys I've not done this before so this is just off the top of my head and see what happens and enjoy the process right just be in a blissful fall like state <laughs> so I'm just gonna blot a little bit to pick up some of the puddly paint and that's good so for our stems I have my go-to brown burnt sienna I just love this color it's like a reddish brown to me so I'm gonna put out a little bit of that and just paint my stems I might need a little smaller brush I'll use like a number three or four round again washy so that we can see that uh, paper underneath I, I have a heavy hand so I tend to do everything much darker and then uh, come back and See that oh, no I really want that later but I do I have a, a heavy hand and I love color so it's hard for me almost to to be light and some people are too light to start and they you know and they build up and it's easier obviously to build up color because once it's there you can't you know go but it's harder to go back than it is to uh so I like the splotchiness of that when I blotted it I'm leaving it like that so we've got a basic color on there I think I'm gonna add this to a couple of the background leaves like I mean I have one two three I cut out a, a few other ones as well to add to the front of the pumpkins but maybe I need one over here I think this one I'm just gonna paint this this stamped one in a little bit more brown and I think maybe one more but I don't know 
and again, washy. I don't want it to be opaque because that's the theme. So I like that. I kind of brought that up. Maybe, I don't know. I don't like him, but he's too close to that one. Um, it's fine the way it is. This one could be good, but it's so pretty. All right, I'm leaving it, but I just wanted that one. All right, and then let's see. I'm going to, I think I really just do want to do the black green along the bottom first. So this is black green, and this time I'm going to float, and floating is getting um, your paint to graduate from really dark to light and fade out so that you get a kind of a shaded look. So if this comes out, I'll show up. There we go. And I use an angle brush to do that. Water, blot on my paper towel, and let the paper towel pull the moisture out of the brush. Let me get it a little wetter. Blot. And then I'm going to corner load the brush, so stick that corner in. And that'll be where the darkest color stays. And then I'm going to work the color down, float it across the bristles till it gets dark, medium, water. And then I use a mop brush to pick up the water. But first, let's just go under the pumpkins. Um, kind of work my way around. And all of the bristles are on the surface when I do this. You don't want it just the tip because then the graduation um, so you want it to fade out strongest color up against the object and oops itchy nose and then it will um, peter out and you can go back and redo it if you want it darker I'm gonna go right over that one oops that's the compressor. I guess my hubby hasn't turned it off, but he was blowing out the uh, sprinklers. So it, it's been doing that for two days, and I told him he, and he just hasn't made it down there. I guess when the pressure runs out, he it refills or something. I don't know. That's what he said. All right, so now I've grounded my pumpkins. Maybe I'll just continue with black green. Uh... I was going to do Payne's Gray, but maybe black green, I don't know. Ugh, this is the hard part for me. That's why I, when I did decorative painting, I loved it because um, the other artists would tell you what color to do. <laughs> and I didn't have to think about it. I'm going to get out a dark, this is called Asphaltum Brown. And I'm going to shade... I'm going to let them dry a little bit, but that's to shade the browns. Let's go in. I'm going to let that dry. I want to go. I'm going to go with the Payne's Gray. I really, really, really love Payne's Gray, but it might not be. So if I keep it light, so again, the floating technique, water, blot, corner load, and then I blend the color into the bristles so it goes from dark to medium to water. Then when I go to the piece, I want all the bristles on the surface so that you get that graduation from dark to light. And because it's water-based paint, I can wipe it off and it's no problem. So do I just want it to go on one side? I kind of do. So I'm just going to go down the right sides of everything for right now and see how I like that and then I can always add it all the way around it if I want it I guess I'm going to go around the pumpkins with this too so I'm corner loading I got a lot more paint on my brush I don't know if you can see I'm, I'm keeping from being zoomed out so you can see the whole process because I just go back and forth but I'm going to stick my brush up. It's so dark, but I like it like that. And I'm going to go right up against the pumpkin. 
and really get it to pop. I can just go right back to that little runway that I created and pick up more color. All the bristles are on the surface when I do this because you need the water as well. That's why it's called a float. Now this is really super dark. I don't really like it that dark. So I'm just, I really just picked up that color. I didn't mop it. Mopping is much more gentle than that, but I just kind of was like, yeah, I don't want it that dark. And I didn't want to let it dry. You always want the darkest color up against the object and then it peters out. I'm going to go right on top of this leaf to there. And now you can see the pumpkins. So I'm really just, I'm not mopping, I'm kind of picking up the color. Mopping is more gentle, you just want to mop the water's edge. But with mixed media, I tend to be a lot more rough. I think I could have used the black green for this whole piece. Um, I think I want to go in with, well, let's just mark my, pen, my pumpkins now. Give them a little uh, shape. I don't like the way that ended up. I'm gonna erase that and just make it go straight down instead of curving. I like the curve at the top, but I don't like it at the bottom. Don't know why. Let's do this guy. Try to keep these more narrow. It is what it is, people. I think when it has that arch like that, it actually, it makes it look rounder. I don't know why I think that, but I'm gonna do it and see what happens. All right, so I have that. What else, what else? Um. I want to put black green along the bottom. My tummy's growling. Because I didn't want to stop to eat because I'm just, I knew this was going to be awesome. So that's why, but I'm starving and so now my tummy's going to growl. I want to go around a couple more leaves uh, with the Payne's Gray. That was way too wet. I didn't blot my brush enough. Oop, I'm still zoomed in so you didn't even see me. But I'm just going to go around this leaf. And this one. And a little bit over here. Um, and see, so this is on top of that one. I'm going to paint this leaf. Do I want to paint it red? Oh, I do. I'm going to go in with true red. I don't know if it's as close to that um, spray, but I'm going to keep it uh, sh sheer, so a wash-ish. It's not a true wash, but it's sheer, and then I may even blot it. But I think I'm going to try and do this one that I did not like. Red. 
and try to like it. And I think it's it's a bit off from that uh, cherry spray that I used. So we'll add a little more something to it. We'll put we'll tin it a little bit. Maybe I'll put one over here to tie it in. For sure. And it is past peak, but we had a beautiful season in New Jersey. We had a beautiful um I actually went to IKEA. Today's Monday. It was Friday. And it was pretty beautiful still. But it was, I think it was just past peak, and there are a lot more leaves on the ground. I'm going to do one more over here. I like to do threes. Um, yeah, and now everything's just, it's all brown. But man, it is splendid. That one I like, but I think I'm going to pull some yellow. I'm going to make yellow, yellow. I'm going to do some yellow. And then we're, we'll get to the pumpkins because I know they're, they're oh, there's my tummy. They are, uh, call, you know what, let's do neon. Let me see. If, this neon is very sheer, so I'm not sure it'll even make a difference. But let's try it, and maybe I don't need to be as um, washy. So let's do this one yellow. And this is the, like I said, yellow neon. And this is just one of the ones that was stamped onto the background. I think it's good. I'm going to do this one. Is this a... I'm sorry. My I looked up and my camera was off and my battery must have died, so I just plugged it in. But I don't know where we left off or where, you know. So I basically I just filled in a few of the stamping leaves and with different colors of washes. I'm trying to keep it very faint and then I started to float my pumpkin and I'm using um, this is burnt orange first and I tend to have a heavy hand guys and I, I talk about this a lot but I put a lot of color on my brush it's just the way I paint and it makes it my own so don't expect yours to look like mine and I won't expect yours to look like mine I mean, mine to look like yours. You know what I mean? Because you have to just let it be. Now, I am not mopping. I'm not being careful because I know how to load a brush. I know how to do this technique like the back of my hand. It is something that I did for years. And it's called floating. And I love this technique as well. There are a lot of mixed media artists that love to use their pit pens, their artist pit pens which is an India ink. And if you've used a Mod Podge or any type of a, um, I guess like a clear medium on there, it, it puts a slickness to your piece that you can um, use to, to smudge that ink. And it gives you a very similar effect. And I used to do that quite a bit. I have the pit pens. But then I decided because painting was my first love, I decided to go back and bring it into the mixed media that I do because again I'm trying to well not again I'm trying to find my own style because decorative painting is such a, a it's a place where you um, do what someone else is designed for you they tell you what color to use they tell you where to put it and so that's what I'm used to and so when I found mixed media I I decided to try my hand at what I want to do what I want it to look like and that's what I've been really enjoying about my journey because uh, I have found somewhat of a style you know um, and it's very free and loose and easy and it's whatever it is is what it is and just enjoy the process so those are all the great things that I've kind of been able to hopefully share with you guys as well that it's it doesn't have to be perfect just do it you know and so these front pieces would definitely be highlighted but I want to shade them as well I'm going to go down to my smaller angle brush because 
it'll just stop me from putting so much paint. I can't find it. And do, 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 do. I have a lot of brushes, so that's why. But it's an angle brush and it should be in here. And there it is. Again, I need to wet it first. Blot on my paper towel. And then I'm going to corner load just a little bit of paint on the corner and work it into the bristles. But see how I don't move slow. I don't, you know, I mean, I just, um, I got to be me. What can I tell you? So I'm going to do on each side of these front pieces and then we'll highlight in the middle. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. I don't want to pick up what I put down. So you have to kind of wait for that to dry. That's the trick with floating. And we'll highlight it in a minute. I'm also going to use um, the brown to separate these. Let's see, I got to go over here and over here. So the pumpkins, I'll use a much darker color to separate them. But we're um, we're in the home stretch. I mean, I think this is basically what I was trying to, what I was getting at. And I did cut out a few more uh, flowers. These are leaves, and I'm going to put them here and there. I'm probably going to come back with... Um, some green, like I'm gonna put a green leaf and some squiggles. But these are so gorge, I can't even. You know what? I might just cover this with one of these because I really didn't like the way that came out. Oh, my stomach. I like this yellow one. I think I'm gonna glue that down. So, something like that, and then a little bit of greenery and some um, I'm sorry I get you know a little bit of greenery as well around like those little swirlies that pumpkins have so let me do the other side of the front But look how much paint I use. Like, it does not have to be that dark. I can't help it. So that's a tickle. I gave it a tickle. I'll do this side. And this side. My stomach is going crazy. Oh my gosh, you totally could hear that. Um... Kiwi, you are so cute. I'm going to do some burnt sienna on the top of this guy, too. And I think I might try the burnt sienna, but I'm going to use my wider brush to separate the pumpkins. Burnt sienna, yeah. I'm waiting for chicken parm, but I shouldn't. i uh, making chicken parm, so um, I'm going to have a snack before that for sure. Now we're starting to look like, oopsie. We're looking like something's happening. I'm going to highlight a few things as well. Um, I'm going to get some green out. Let's get, I have the black green and I'll use leaf green just because it's on my desk. Um, and I'll do it like a two tone. Probably use a filbert if I have, yeah, this one. This looks kind of proportionate. It's kind of. A little bit ratty. I don't, yeah, I'll use a smaller one, which looks even worse. Sometimes I keep a nice brush over here, an extra 
Oh, no. All right, one of these. I'll use this one. So what, how you do this is I'm going to water, blot. This is too ratty. Oh, my gosh. Excuse me. That's just because I'm hungry. And All right, but see, this is all splayed out, and I don't want it to be splayed out. I'd like it to be better, but my filberts never stay nice for me. Oh, this is a good one. This is a number six filbert. Let's try that. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to double load this. So I'm going to light green on one side, flip it over, dark green, and I'm going to blend it out a little bit. And see, I'll do it one more time. Dark green, light green, blend it out a little bit. And we're going to put a leaf. Am I in the shot? Oh, dark on the bottom, right here, and maybe right here. And how about a little smaller one, maybe if I can? There, and something kind of hanging right here. I put the dark on top, damn it. Um, a couple down bottom, so. Dark green, light green, blend it out, and put a few down here. So I'll make a little vine going across the bottom too. I think pumpkins grow on vines, or vines are involved in some way. So I have two there. All right, I'll leave that for now. Uh, definitely want to add some highlights. So I have this neon orange and I also pulled, um, no I didn't. I thought I had just a light orange. I'm going to use the neon and I'm going to highlight and see if it makes a difference. I don't know. Kiwi, you got feathers on me. I'm going to use the smaller angle brush and see how that works. I really should go and eat something because it's you guys don't want to hear this tummy growling situation. I think it makes a difference. I see it, but look how much paint I have on my brush. So much. Maybe a little there. A little here. I should have erased my pencil lines as well, but I don't mind because it's mixed media and that's allowed. Some people scribble all over their pages because they like it. They like to like it to look like that. And uh, so there you go. There's no rhyme or reason, and you can um, do what you like. So I like that. I go back up, you'll see. I'm gonna go in and do, I could dry brush a highlight on the very front, but I think I'm gonna try a flip float. And a flip float is basically, I'm gonna float one, one, and then I'm gonna dab it with my, um, so I'm gonna wet the surface a little bit. And I'm going to corner load. I haven't done this in a long time and I'm really not being specific. But I'm basically just putting the paint in the center here. And then I'm going to just tap it and hope for the best. Um, I want to highlight the stem as well. Sort of, kind of, actually, um, you know what? No, I'm going to shade it. I'm going to shade. Matt, you getting hungry? I'm making chicken parm. Um, go down the side, at least one side. And then we'll highlight the other, maybe. Um, so that's good. They don't look as good as I'd hoped they would. 
Um, let's do some like tendrils and stuff. I'm going to use a liner brush like a... You okay, Kay? What's the matter? Do you have to go potty or you want to go back to your cage? Here, come here. Girl. She usually starts talking when she has to go potty. So this is a number one liner. It's a script liner, I believe. Yep. And I'm just going to water down this puddle of paint. And I don't care if I get dark green and light green. And I'm just going to kind of That doesn't, that doesn't look right. I like to have Q-tips on my desk as well because you can always take it off if you just hate it. Because I just don't like the angle of that. I should come in this angle. And same thing with him. I kind of, the way that the leaf grows is how you should pull your vein. And if you really get this paint thinned down, it works a lot better. But I'm just going to go across. Oops, I just went in the wrong color. That was Payne's gray. And just kind of let the, just try to make these squiggles. They're not anything, I can't tell you. You just squiggle your brush and you'll sometimes get a good one. Um, but just practice and that's basically it because I'm going to put leaves down there too. Um, what else do I want to do? Uh, 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 uh. Outlining is always good, so I think I'm done. Maybe I should outline. You know what would be really cool? If I embossed with gold or if I stamped with gold, which I don't have gold, so I can't really do it. Um, no, I don't have a gold stamp pad. I don't know if they exist, but... Um, so I think that's it. I hope my camera was on for long enough. And I mean, I think I'm going to go around the edges with the Payne's Gray. So this is, it's like a bluish color. I love, and it's very wet. I just got my brush. Or, so I'm just going to go across the top. And if you have the Tim Holtz ink pads, you know how he, the distress inks, it's basically how you do that. And I'm just doing it rough and kind of closing in the page, containing everything in there. Hi Kirby, what was it, huh? What was out there? I do think it still needs some pops of like white or something. There's definitely not enough white. Like I absolutely, I can't even see where I um, stamped those circles on there with that like buttermilk color paint. Um, so I think I need to do that. Uh... Which one was I going to 
and then I think I'm going to do some stamping. So I'm going to adhere these and I'll be back and we'll do some final touches. All right, since I use neons, I think I'm going to, I need to add a little more brightness with the, um, with a green. And so I have this um, citron green. I'm just going to highlight the leaves a little bit. Just pop a little on there. They just look so dark. And I'm going to also put a little couple of vines with it as well. And do some line work, I think. Because OMG, I just thought of something. I'm going to use gold to just put on the leaves. Um, kind of like a tint. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I also need to shade around. I'm going to use the black green, which it's kind of around these guys. I just glued these on. And then I think we're good for October. So I need to come up with something for November. Uh, could just be a snowy scene for November, right? November is definitely, we're doing good. We're back to the 50s, but it got, I mean, 50 degrees. It did get cold, though, in the 20s, and we're not used to that. Like in New South Jersey, we're pretty good with, we don't really have super cold winters. Um, and yeah, we'll have just like a little, February gets cold, you know, but in November, not usually, although we get snowstorms from time to time. It's just, you know. But yeah, I love the 50s. If it would stay the 50s all winter, I'd be so happy. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of line work with that citron green. So just kind of here and there. And a little swirly too. Oops. See, I like when I do that, like make a little, a blob almost, and get that extra texture. It just looks pretty. Um, and then I do think I'm going to do some line work. So I'm going to use my pen. I like to use, and I could use a Posca paint pen, which, you know what, let me get a brown Posca paint pen. Since I have them, I have the fine point. This is the Uni Posca paint pens. This is the point seven. I think it's considered the fine point, but I have a brown. And I'm going to, and I could do this with paint. It's what I've done for years, but I have these tools. So let's put some detail. Ooh, that was the lid. Oopsie. In the um, stem and just outline the pumpkins with this. Ooh, it has a little, okay. And I have wetness there, so I should probably wait, but that's just not how I roll. It's a little light. You can't really see it. It's a pretty brown color, but it's a little too light for this project, I think. I need a darker brown. You can see it, but it's not what I was hoping. Um, even if I outline the um, pumpkin with it, I don't think it's going to do what I want it to do. I want it to pop, and so I'm going to outline a few things, and I'm going to write October. Oh, I was going to tint everything with gold, so let me do that, and then I'll outline. So 
I'm going to use my little angle brush and this is just a metallic gold by DecoArt Dazzling Metallics. It's called Glorious Gold. And I'm going to corner load. And these metallic paints are very sheer. They're not opaque paints. Um, but I want to tint these. And since I sh I'm going to tint them on the left side. That's a feather. My bird is preening herself and feathers are flying. So on the left sides of these, I will put gold and it's so yummy. I love it. I love adding gold. I love adding metallic. How am I going to not put this on my pumpkin? I think my pumpkin needs it too, but can you guys see that popping? Oh, OMG, it is gorgeous. Okay, I can spatter. Maybe I should spatter. I think my pumpkins need to be spattered. Um. My dog, my dog is crazy. She barks at the wind. I have nothing's going on. I mean, it's well, kids could be getting home from school. She dogs have very sensitive ears, I think. I really think that's true. She's the first dog I ever had, but man, she just she hears things. She knows when Joe's home before I the garage door opens like Come on, guys. Come on. Is this Spectacular with this gold. Come on, All right, enough, Missy. Oh man, that just—that's everything. It just made it oh, okay. Now, let me just outline a few things, and I'm gonna use my pen. I'm not gonna use paint pen, although I could. Let's see what that's like. I'm going to use black. All right, here we go. And you know what's good about this is I can wipe it off if I don't like what I did. But it just, it's bumpy and it can spatter. Yeah, see there's school buses going by. She, she knows what she's doing. And I think I am going to do Yeah, I like it. I think it, I'm not a huge fan of outlining like, actually, am I? I shouldn't say that because it depends on the project. It can really help bring everything together. In this case, it's I think it's really helping. I do. So, give it a try. I should probably outline a few of the leaves because you can't I can't just leave it like this I, I mean I don't know guys then it starts to get carried away I don't know I don't know I'm no expert but I like it 
I like it. It looks good. Maybe I should just leave it like that. And then maybe some white. I need to just do white somehow. What, Kay? What do you want? You want to go back home? You need to go home? I need to paint this red one. I already did the gold, but... Because I wanted to tie it in with the other red. And I think... I can call it done. I should call it... I love it, though. I mean, it, it's definitely different than I thought it would be. I thought it would be... See, but I'm such a heavy hand when it comes to shading. So, like... All the shading behind here and everything. And I could still bring highlights up more. Um, you could highlight everything and shade everything. Um, but I like it. I'm going to get my pen. This is just a... I have a gold pen. No. It's a Uniball Vision Fine Waterproof Pen. And it's got a much finer point. But I think I need to outline a couple of the, le of the leaves, yeah. Because that way, it plays into the rest of the design. So let me gently try. Because it will bounce around a little. And you can get the, this ink off as well if you, you know, quickly. So let's do that one. I'll do this one. Is this a, I can't even tell if I um, adhered them. Yeah, I think I needed to do that. And definitely at least one more, like this guy. Kiwi wants to go back to her cage. All right, Kay, I know. I'm trying to finish. I'm trying. It's the thing with this. I mean, and you can walk away and come back and add more at another time. So I have those three. And I have to do... Maybe these two. I should at least... I'm going to do the red. I know, Kay. We're going to go. I was going to do this live today. It's Monday. But I just get too distracted by the chat. So I decided to... Um, not do that. Um, the only thing left is white. I kind of want to do something with white and I don't know what to do. I have the white uniball vision. So I can do feathers, feathers everywhere. Like a little highlight down the centers. along the top. I never highlighted the um, stems. And I'm going to write October. It's too bumpy. Well, October, boy, that looks weird. October, yeah. I think we're done. Doopy doopy doo. I like it. All right, you guys, that was super fun. I enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>